Hello, you're watching the Tropics Topics of September the 13th, 2018. Still monitoring all the Atlantic activity. Of course, we have Hurricane Florence approaching the coastline of North Carolina as Category 2. Tropical storms Joyce and Helene are both approaching the Azores, will likely do so longer term. And then Isaac, which is barely holding on as a tropical entity with winds of 40 miles per hour in the Eastern Caribbean. And Invest 95L, which has a slightly lower chance of development now, 50% in the next two days as approaches the Mexico-Texas coastline within the next two days. So here is the entire Atlantic wide shot. Of course, Florence, Joyce and Helene up here, Isaac in the Caribbean, and 95L in the Western Gulf. We'll start off with Florence, obviously, that is by far the biggest storm right now, and both physically and in terms of actual impacts. So here's the storm on the infrared loop. We can see, you know, not the best looking hurricane in the world, but it is very large. You can see how big this whole cloud extent it extends out from the actual center, which is still relatively vigorous and pretty strong as a result. I mean, here's the radar loop we can see here coming out of Moorhead City. And we can see that even though that there is a break right here, as we can see in the southern eye wall, the eye, the actual eye wall is still pretty vigorous in the northern half. And this whole thing, as we can see, is moving very slowly. Now it's moving towards the west northwest at about five miles per hour, according to the latest advisory. It's going to be moving very slowly towards the west northwest and then may take more of a westward jog so it's likely to make landfall somewhere along this portion right here of North Carolina near Wilmington, basically anywhere from the down towards this cape up towards uh, Surf City. Anywhere in that area it could see a landfall from Florence, but the landfall won't matter. As we can see, the storm, again, is very large and is going to be pumping in quite a bit of uh, rain into these areas. I mean, we can see that even here in uh, the radar loop. We can see huge, radar, uh, huge uh, rain bands extending up into... The outer banks here even extending all the way up to Nags Head on almost the kill level hills up here. These are very intense rain bands. You can see rain rates of up to over an inch per hour, or maybe even more than that in some of these more some of these areas of reddish color. And you know, even in the eyeball you see more fierce winds. Anywhere towards the north and east of the center, you'll be seeing extreme amounts of storm surge. So again, it's not all about the wind. So even though Florence has weakened to a category two, it is still a very powerful and it's still a very dangerous hurricane by every stretch of the word. And here's the latest National Hurricane Center for it, guys. You can just see here how large this extent of tropical storm force winds extends, extends outward, almost to the border with North Carolina and Virginia at this point. Even the hurricane force winds aren't too far offshore. They're probably right uh, off the coast of Moorhead City uh, right now, and are probably about to move on shore there later this evening. And this will be moving, again, very slowly to the west. So as a result, rainfall is going to be stacking up in this area of the country. And to an extreme rate, we can see here in the WPC forecast, there's this whole area of purple right here. That's over 20 inches of rain, folks. There could be isolated areas 30, 40 inches, not out of the question. Some of these areas have already been seeing a few, has, have already seen a few inches of rainfall from Florence already, and that is just going to stack up as the storm continues to progress slowly towards the west. And even by this time tomorrow, it may just barely be inland. I mean, we can kind of see here that it's not a huge distance offshore. We can see if we put out the model, out the actual center here from Wilmington, it's about 100 miles away. It's not that far away from the coast. And as a result, it's going to be, and as we can tell, it's moving very slowly. So if you do the math here, moving at five miles per hour, this will be onshore. I mean, this will be onshore pretty, by the, like this time tomorrow, at least. So it's going to be very slow mover for a hurricane and even after landfall. Here it is on Saturday. It's still over South Carolina, still over South Carolina by Sunday, and then finally begins to kick out as we get into the beginning of next week. And I mean, again, it's not just the rainfall and the wind, even though the wind threat is a little lesser. Storm surge threat is still there. It's still a big threat from Florence. You can see here some areas still expect to see six, nine feet of storm surge, maybe even higher, maybe in the double digits for storm surge, and that is can be easily devastating for some of these portions of the coastline. And even three feet, two feet of storm surge could be pretty you know, significant because your car can start to float away in just a foot and a half of water. So that is something that you need to keep in mind if you have not evacuated from this area. And if you haven't, then I kind of question your decisioning because this is a very dangerous storm. And all those forecasts showing the storm being catastrophic so far aren't too far off, except maybe in the wind category. The winds might be are going to be a little less intense, but that is no reason to neglect the storm because, again, it is still a very dangerous, a very powerful hurricane, and you should not take the storm lightly in any regard. 
This is a very serious situation for the coast of North Carolina and South Carolina. Please take it with the utmost seriousness if you have not evacuated and you are uh, hearing this update right now. Uh, so that's generally what's going on with Florence. I'm going to kind of go through everything else that's going on right now in the tropics. So right here we have uh, Helene and Joyce. Both are weakening right now. Joyce is just this very barely visible spin right here you can see uh, to the northwest of Helene. It's barely even a tropical or subtropical cyclone right now. Uh, Helene's weakening, but both are moving towards the north and towards the Azores. Um, Joyce could potentially dissipate in the next few uh, hours, depending on if convection can re-blow up over the center, but right now it's being sheared by an upper trough that's moving into this portion of the basin. As for Helene, it should continue up to the north and will probably impact the Azores later on. There are already tropical storm watches up for the islands, as we can see here in the National Hurricane Center forecast, as Helene is expected to move through the islands as a tropical storm uh, during the day on Saturday into Sunday. So, and it could be a mostly just rough, rough seas maker. It could, I mean, it could easily bring down quite a bit of rainfall over these islands. And of course, the threat of gusty winds that could potentially damage some structures. So, of course, this is something that you need to keep in mind as Helene passes through. Uh, so that's the situation for the Azores. Now on to Isaac here. Uh, very disorganized today. Moved through, it moved through the Lesser Antilles this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, Passed, I believe, just south of Dominica. I'm not, haven't checked to see if it made landfall or not. But either way, it, they, uh, Isaac produced quite a bit of uh, gusty winds over the island. Unfortunately, not too much rainfall has occurred just yet. Uh, but there still could be some coming in. As we can see, there's still a lot of convection out over here towards the east of the center. As we and uh, as we can also see, it's being sheared pretty heavily from the north. As the ridge up here building in behind Florence is shearing all of this convection down towards the south. Now. Recon went in there today and had a bit of a hard time finding a closed wind circulation. We can still see here that the clouds are moving cyclonically here in the low levels here, but it is questioned as to whether or not the winds are doing the exact same at this moment. So it's possible that Isaac could be opening up into a tropical wave axis, but we'll just have to wait and see on that. Um, right now, the forecast storm remains a bit uncertain. Um, if Isaac does open up into a wave in the next 24 hours, which at this point it is likely to do so, then we're going to have to continue to watch the way as it moves towards the west, as some models do indicate that there is the possibility it could try to get some more of uh, attack together in the Western Caribbean. But again, it's still kind of uncertain at this time. It's questioned as to whether or not this could regain tropical cyclone status or not. At this point, it doesn't seem all too likely, but it's just something we have to monitor just in case. Here's a National Hurricane Center forecast for Isaac showing it becoming a depression by tomorrow, and this might be generous. Uh, they did note that there is quite a bit of forecasting uncertainty with the storm and showing it as a depression basically through Monday but as throughout this time it's likely to just be a tropical wave I don't think it will actually be a depression for this long it would have to be quite vigorous in terms convectively speaking for it to actually maintain that uh, so that's Isaac uh, the last system we're going to discuss in the Atlantic today is invest 95 L uh, this has a slightly lower chance of development just considering that it's beginning to run out of time before it actually reaches the coastline and we can see here that it has some low-level rotation. It's got some you know, pretty strong uh, winds out here coming in from the north. Uh, these northerlies over here are pretty strong, and these southerlies out here are pretty noticeable. But there's very little evidence of any uh, westerly flows. We can see here in the recon data, there's just very light and variable flow all throughout the system, meaning that the actual center of circulation is very broad, and nothing is really consolidated into a tr into an actual close center of circulation that would be enough to qualify the system as a tropical depression. In addition, we can see that all this, this spin is basically based up here, but you can also notice here in, at the very bottom of the page, you can see that there's a very little uh, spin right here. This is the mid-level center of the storm. These two right here are not vertically stacked, so once that happens, you can, are going to have a very hard time actually getting this thing to really get uh, going in terms of development. And at this point, the National Hurricane Center has lowered the odds of development for 95 L's approach to the coast. But regardless of development, we're still likely to see quite a bit of rainfall uh, from the northernmost portion of Mexico all throughout southern Texas. Uh, even though the rainfall totals uh, predicted have been lowered just a bit because the storm isn't actually developing into a full-fledged tropical cycle, and we can still see some isolated rainfall totals of four, potentially five inches of rain across the uh, southern portion of Texas. But in general, expect rainfall totals between 2 and 3 inches across this portion from the Austin-San Antonio area southward across the coastal bend, Corpus Christi, uh, down towards Brownsville, over towards uh, 
Equal Pass, and Del Rio and Laredo. Uh, this general portion of Texas, you're likely to see quite a bit of rain, and even extending a bit farther out from that, you could see some rain from that from uh, potentially from 95L, but mostly from another upper level disturbance. And you can obviously obviously see here all this rain over North Carolina associated with Hurricane Florence, which we have already discussed. So that's it for the Atlantic activity. I also want to touch on uh, the Super Typhoon Mancut, which still is a very powerful storm that is approaching the northern Philippines. The island of Luzon is likely to receive an impact from the storm. It is a beast of a storm, Category 5, winds of 175 miles per hour, slightly lower than yesterday, but it is still a formidable storm and a very, very large storm. Uh, I don't know exactly how far out the typhoon force winds actually extend, but they are very large, I can tell you that. And this storm is going to be progressing towards northern Luzon over the next few days and will likely impact the island as a super typhoon. As we can see here in the forecast from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, it will be moving inland probably sometime on Saturday with winds of potentially Category 5 force as it does so. Uh, in the forecast here, it shows it moving in with winds of 145 knots, 165 miles per hour. Uh, the good news is that this portion of coastline isn't heavily populated. Most of the population associated in the province of Cagayan, which is the northernmost province of Luzon, is more based inland. So that is some good news with this uh, storm. But, I mean, still, this is going to be a very big storm and probably the biggest that they've seen in quite some time and probably going to be mostly the most intense landfall they've seen in quite some time as well. And as you can see, it will eventually progress in the South China Sea and eventually impact southern um, southern China by Monday and be a, wait, is that, yeah, that's uh, Monday, and will be probably a, uh, what is it, a 80 knot a typhoon. So more than likely it's going to be a, it's going to be a category one typhoon. Sorry, my, had a bit of a. Lost my train of thought there. I apologize about that. So yeah, it'll be moving into China as a Category 1 typhoon. Still a pretty strong system, though, once it moves into China uh, by Sunday, Monday time frame after it moves over the Philippines and then eventually over northern Vietnam and into Myanmar as a weakening and decaying tropical cyclone. So that's all the activity in the Atlantic and in the world right now that is currently threatening land. Of course, Hurricane Florence bearing down on North Carolina will probably be very devastating storm for that region, as we've discussed at nauseum over recent days. Um, Joyce and, and Helene moving towards the Azores. Isaac in the Eastern Caribbean. Uh, f future for that storm remains uncertain. It's likely dissipating very soon. And 95L moving into the into the coast around the Mexico-Texas border as probably just a disturbance and will just be a big rainmaker for that area. And of course, Mank Hut in the Western Pacific, uh, impacting northern the northern Philippines and southern China over the next few days. All right, that's it for today. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to stay weather alert, especially during this time.